anyone have any questions for Adrian? Oh, yeah, down um, people questions. <laughs> it's back and then. Okay. Um, with like devices getting smaller, more powerful, uh, more power, uh, power efficient, do you not think the Wi-Fi would eventually win over the other like, hardware wireless products? <coughs> um, given that most devices already speak Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wi -Fi. Uh, I guess, I think some of it could come down to the configuration <coughs> options, if the other ones have got easier, better ways, but then we might be able to work out some ways of doing better Wi-Fi configuration. Um, I mean, we did, for a good night lamp, uh, we, we wouldn't, yeah, went back and forth with all these kind of solutions, and, and we ended up thinking that Wi-Fi would be one that would make, it's a bit more expensive, um, and at the moment, as I say, it's a bit more power hungry. Um, so, I'm not sure it would be the only one. At the moment, if I had to kind of pick, I mean, I'd take bets. It feels like Wi-Fi is just, you know, it's already there, so, so that will work. Um, Bluetooth LE looks like a good other bet, and possibly to kind of do better than Zigbee does. Um, just because Bluetooth LE is going into all of the Bluetooth chips now, which means that it's in, like, all of the new mobile phones. Or it's like it's in there and it just needs to, you know, a new software update to fix it or something. Like, and basically, just because you'll get it by default will suddenly mean there's a whole load of like endpoints out there. Whereas Zigbee doesn't really have kind of a way to get that sort of penetration. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm not sure. I guess there'll be there'll be space for more than just one, and it'll depend on your specific application. But yeah, we as I say, we went with Wi-Fi. And, and also looking at some GSM um, sort of mobile phone tech for people who don't have Wi-Fi and things are the kind of options we've, we've settled on at the moment, although we haven't shipped devices yet, so you yeah, know, all maybe something to change. <laughs> um, good enough. Melanie? Um, um, how do you get around the commercial pressure? So you were going on about Apple and whatever. Yeah. In, in, in the business I work in, we uh, we get in, we get a, a client asks us, can you stick this into one of our products? And I think, well, why do you pick that one? And it's just because somebody, somebody else has bummed them some money to go for this this protocol. And so, yeah. and so I've got, like, in one room in my house, I use the Apple TV to watch videos on one protocol. In another room, the PS3 uses DLA to do in a different way. And I have to kind of set it all up so that they all try and work happily together, but it's all a bit messy. So yeah. how do you get around the, the, the companies who, in the end, are the ones going to be making lots of products with X in? And I guess, and that's some of the kind of how you work out which ones are going to win. And, and there is a risk that yeah. one company will kind of, and I would hope that the kind of CompuServe and AOL examples uh, are indicative of, of how you'll be able to do cooler other stuff, and there will be like the, it, you will end up with more than one like hub in your house because like it's just as you say it's like there's going to be too many different competing things, and what we need to do is hopefully get enough of the stuff to be interoperable, and that shows how much more interesting things can be when they will talk to each other um, and not be part of a closed ecosystem to give people the kind of the choice. But it's it's yeah. convincing the hub makers to spend the extra money to, to stick in two solutions rather than one. Yeah, and some of are sticking in like two solutions. Like I said, the smart things one yeah. has got Zigbee and Z-Wave in it. Um, current cost of doing the Quell device, which has got everything in it. Like, I'm sure, oh, I may not have Z-Wave, um, is it or Z-Wave, whatever. But it's definitely got Zigbee and some of the kind of like low 433 MHz stuff in it. Um, and Wi-Fi, and so, so some people are just betting on all of them. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess it will become cheap enough that you'll you'll maybe end up with a couple of hubs, and hopefully there won't be lots because people will realise that that's not really going to work. Well, there, Matt. I don't know if you know in the kind of web world we have the W3C that does standards. Yes. Are they doing anything to do with hardware? They are not aware of them doing anything to do with hardware as such, but they are playing bits in the internet of things stuff. I mean, 
Does, is the XMPP stuff, is that the WPC standards? No idea. Uh, because that's got some internet of things, crossover stuff. There is a group. There is a group in W3C that's looking at this stuff. Right. But I don't know. I'm, yeah. I don't know anyone that's in it, so I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I, I suppose to some extent, the groups of those sorts of things are often the people deciding that there's going to be one protocol to build more, and I usually switch off at that point. Um, whereas I'm kind of like, yes, the W3C. They've already published a load of standards that that the Internet of Things will use, um, like. Like HTML and XML and stuff like that. Um, you know, Bublino is an Internet of Things thing, and he talks XML, or consumes it at least. Um, and the IETF, which should do all the kind of the slightly lower down protocols, you know, they came up with IP and TCP and UDP and HTTP, and you know, all those things are all Internet of Things protocols as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, yeah, they are playing with it in a minute. Cool. Yeah, it worried me for a second when you started talking about six low pound because a lot of the advocates of that is a one true, right? It's a one true fake. But I, I realised later that you weren't saying that. It's not so, the only answer. No, thank, you for, yeah. thank you for. Thank you for. No, what I wanted to ask really is, um, given that there is a bit of a mess down there right now mm -hmm. at the lowest at the lowest levels, and, yeah. and there's some justification because of things like power, etc. Maybe what, what we can at least be doing is saying anything that's outside the building or you know, outside the, the, uh, the immediate environment yeah. must be strictly internet protocols. As long as that happens, then we're getting that. Yeah. Because then we can build it down through later on. Yes, as long as not everyone's got and bought their one specific. Yeah. And then realize that this new device you want to buy won't talk to that bridge. And, but yes, I think yeah. data interoperability at least is a good, like the web is quite a good way, place to start in the look yes. at open and things and these things need to talk to each other. But unfortunately, that means that things like bird cloud, I'm sorry, but you know, it, it doesn't cut it because it, it's, it's going up, it's going into right. the area where we don't want to be going. Yeah. And actually, the aptly named Mac Web. The CEO of Bird Cloud yes. didn't completely reject the idea that he might want to be one of the guys that says we're going to open up everything. Right. Because oh, one, okay, cool. one of them could do that. Yeah. Because that's it, they've got shipping devices, like that's all the people are them, like, you know, getting to the world's heart. Uh, I guess we're talking about the standards and the common way of doing it, we're talking about WPC. Uh, we're talking about the, the upper levels of the OSI model, and kind of where I think Paul's going, kind of where, where my thought was prior to his question is the lower layers of the OSI model. Surely IEEE uh, kind of we set some standards in that area. Does anyone aware, are you aware, is anyone aware of working group and the connection between the lower level of the OSI model to the WC, WC3 kind of thing? Surely yeah, that's part of the solution. Yeah, I don't know of anyone kind of. Because it's almost like the IETF sits in the middle there, in yeah. some ways, so, but in the kind of normal web world. Yeah. But I don't know if anyone kind of could connect I mean, those. If you reframe it as the ASI model, what you've got to do, in my view, is connect the different layers up. Right. You know, to get the interoperability. Yeah. I mean, I think there are good challenges in how you get yeah. these things to talk to each other. Because, like, at the moment, getting, you know, everyone kind of builds sort of stacked, vertical stacked up. Because that's something that's understandable and kind of you can yeah. get your head around. And then at some point we need to start getting them to touch that. And that's going to be a mess and very tricky. But like we kind of need devices on the ground so that we can be going, okay, how do we reprogram this little printer so that it can then talk direct to Publino for some reason? I'm not sure why it would need to, but what was that? So um, if we're risking a comp sort of things, are we also risking the government as things? What about the end of I think one of the things we want to do is put security in at the start. There are some bits that we haven't really kind of, um, you know, there were some mistakes made in some of the bits of the web when that got built and that it didn't have the authentication or security in quite as much as it should have done, probably. So I think we need more of that and internet of things from the get go. Um, and some of the kind of like getting things to talk to each other is going to help with, with avoiding that because if you're not going through Berg's servers, there isn't that single point where the government can go, oh, by the way, can you plug this in for us? Oh, uh, oh yeah, that's great. 
um, this stuff won't go outside of your home network. So hopefully that will help persuade or help show some of the public. Because lots of people don't really care about this stuff. No, no idea why. I, I, you know, writing protocols is awesome. Sure, surely everybody would love doing that. Um, but loads of people don't. And, and so things like that hopefully will help show the public some of the risks. And we need to do a better job of explaining the risks and talking about why the open stuff is better um, in kind of practical ways, not just in kind of like, we religiously believe that open is good. Um, you kind of need you know, reasons for real people to care about it. That's all the time we have for questions now. I'm so. around for the rest of today and tomorrow, so come and yeah, grab me, have a chat. And let's give a very big round of applause.